That always happens with the people who do shopping too much. Explain to him. Mm. And then you're confused. You should ask yourself whether you're sincere enough, okay? If you're really sincere, and this is the path for you. If you doubt, that means you're not sincere enough. You can use microphone. You speak uh, what? Jo Polish. Polish, okay. <sighs> Only when we are really sincere, then God will bring us to the most, uh, the, 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 the most suitable path for us. Tell him. There's no question about whether a master is good or not. There's only one question, whether the student is good or not. As long as we are not yet ready, as long as we are not truly, sincerely seek the, high, the most high, we will encounter all kind, of, uh, uh, all kind of level of masters, but not the highest one. So the question remains with you, okay? <laughs> Until you know that you really seek the Most High, or you seek magical power, or you seek some curiosity, all right? Why don't you speak louder? So, uh, is there a Polish translation? Okay, okay, then it's good. Yeah. Is it clear? You have another question? Yeah. Take your time, okay? Tell him, take his time. And check your own heart. Hmm? Mm. I am sure that you are on the right path. But my surety cannot help you if it's not your surety. Yeah? If you can trust me, then I tell you 100% in God's name, that you're on the best path. Okay, but if you, it is yourself, <laughs> you must trust yourself, okay? Trust your intuition, your wisdom, your sincerity, then you know it is right or not. <laughs> okay, uh, any more question? Yeah. Okay. Yes. New one? New mm -hmm. one? We, we are not allowed touched by other people. Uh, it's not not allowed. It's not allowed. Just that you are now on the highest connection with the most high power, okay? If you go and bow to somebody else and ask them to bless you, then you lower your status, all right? That's all. Otherwise, in daily life, people touch you, they hug you. Well, how can you do it? How can you avoid it? Understand now? Okay, yes. that's all, all right? Yes. So don't lower your status and beg for any blessing from anybody else except your own master. Yes. Capish? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Mm. I'm working with a massage. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's you okay. recite the holy names? Yes. And you? You have blessing for the patient also. Okay, it's okay. Thank <laughs> and you. And for yourself, meanwhile. Thank you, Master. <laughs> yes. Kinesiologia. Sabade. Is there any translation? Yes, sure. Uh, she asked if... What? Me what on that Asked if she can work with the patient. Of course not, why not? That's from Vietnam. Like massage, right? Oh, yeah, the massage. No. What, what is it? What is it? Spiritual healing? Each test. Each you get a test. Chi? Oh, yeah. Is she touching the patient? It's a muscle, muscle test or something. No muscle or something. She's checking her, his muscles. She's just touching Yes, touching she the can. Eyes. She can do this. Uh, do the chin. Of course, if a doctor, you have. If as a doctor you have some time to touch the patient yeah. to see whether they are reflex muscle or their pulse and heartbeat, it's okay. It's okay. Don't complicate things, all right? 
Your job, you do it. Otherwise, I cannot give you <laughs> your living expenses <laughs> for everybody if you change your job. It's okay. What I mean, touching people is that you don't go and beg people to bless you, you know? Like any kind of monk will bless you or put in here and thing like that. They put the sand and pass and thing like that here in India. You know that? Any kind of people. Don't just uh, lower your standard, okay? Because you're now the children of God, you're accepted in the highest position in the kingdom of God. You should not come and beg for any lower level of blessing. That's all, okay? Otherwise, your, your, your job you, you should do, and your wife you should hug, embrace your husband, your ki children, and do your own, live your ordinary life. Huh? Okay? Is that what you worry about? Huh? No problem, okay? Yes, it's good, <laughs> no problem. The less you meditate, the more questions. <laughs> the more you meditate, the less questions. That is my experience, as well as everybody else's experience. Sometimes, uh, just because the thing we know before, you know, like the thing we know today at the initiation are different. So our mind, the brain, the computer, uh, don't like to accept, saying, well, I hear different, I know different. Today you say different thing. How come? So, so that's why we have often the problem. But later, no more. Eh? Later, no more. Uh, where is uh, Valerie? Is he there? No? Valerie? Valerie, when she first uh, initiated, this is what she told me, yeah? If, if I'm incorrect anyway, you correct me, okay? She told me that before she, has, uh, she was bad. <laughs> I don't know how bad she was. What she means is she has problem and struggle and... It with many kinds, you know, we human beings do all have, like inside, struggle and fighting with, with, with ourselves inside. And then also temper, yeah? But the more she meditates, she meditates more and more and more, with the group meditation especially, and now she feels good. She knows she has uh, progress. So if the new people, just take it easy, all right? <laughs> Meditate more, and then you will know everything. You don't have to ask me anymore. Mostly when you see me, you just smile. Eh? Or just we eat together or drink coffee together. We don't come for question and discussion anymore, but we come just to enjoy each other's presence. Mostly after some time, it becomes like that. It's not that other question will be written on the blackboard for you, and all the answer is there, but just that you just know. You're just inside, you know? There's intuition, and that you feel very satisfied, very happy, that you have no need to know, even if the whole world uh, open before you, you, you don't feel uh, curious. It's okay if you don't know. That is the time when you know. That's why the ancient saint, saints, they say, the one who knows uh, likes the one who are ignorant. The one who knows do not speak, right? Do not discuss, <laughs> do not argue. The one who argues is the one who doesn't know. Now we are still stuck with all kind of names and form and, you know, so we, we, we really have problem. But later on, everything will be clear. Otherwise, I would be the one who sit alone here, and all the disciples would be running around somewhere else already. You know what I mean? Not that ten years they still stick around, and happier and happier, and more and more convinced each day. You know, that is the proof. It's not that I, I don't give you money, I don't give you any help. Of course, some, one or two, when you're really in trouble, then we have, just like we have anybody else outside in this world, who are the children of God. But that is not that I buy you with my money or with anything at all. You know what I mean? Yeah? Okay. So the more you meditate, the more you'll be sure of your path, of yourself, and the more happy you become. And then no more question, really. After a few months, you already have very less question. Even if you ask me question, you already know. 
Sometimes you just want to catch my attention. Yeah, that's for sure. Mostly the Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> they already know, but they just want to ask so that I look at them. Oh, yeah, Mr. X or Mrs. E is there, thing like that. But they know. Y you, you, you get what I mean, yeah? Okay. So I think you just meditate for a while. Now you, you have too much brain here at the moment. So now I think I let loose the energy, get out, eat something, all right? <laughs> and digest <laughs> the power that you assimilate today. And then I see you in the evening, is it okay? Yeah. Uh. Originally, I, th I changed. I thought, you know, first you meditate together, and then uh, in the evening you g get initiation. But then many people already expect, you know, and give me pressure inside. So I thought, okay, never mind, never mind. I let it be, all right? And you are not the only one that feel a little bit restless and uh, a little bit agitated. And me also, <laughs> every time, every time before retreat or before initiation and after initiation, I tell to you, it tells you something to the new initiate. I don't know what initiation really means to you, but it means a lot to me. It's not that you sit there, listen to instruction, and you still struggling inside whether I'm worth it for you to accept as your teacher of this uh, initiation. It's worth it for you, for worthy for you to accept. It's not like that. It's one in a million years time chance. I don't know how much it means to you, but you should know. You should know how much I have to do before and after your initiation. It's not that you sit there on your pretty ass and then still wondering whether you should stay with me or you should go. You stay, you go, it's your problem. It's your right, your choice. I have no intention to bind you or to keep you, to keep you or to do anything to you physically, mentally, psychically, at all. I just stand by as a very unconditional friend. Whenever you need me, you come. Should you decide to go, you go. That is all the initiation means to you. It's like you go shopping, because your mind is so bad, cannot recognize what is the difference between true diamond and glass. Therefore, you struggle. Therefore, you ask so many sharp questions. But you don't know what it means. You really don't. At least the time you die, you will know. You will know what initiation means to you. At that time, no one is around you. No one can accompany you. No money can buy your power. No position can protect you from hellfire. At that time, the master is the only one that comes to you. Then you will know, OK? So good appetite. Whatever you do, you should do it wholeheartedly. Then you get the whole sum result. Otherwise, you get nothing. Understand? Even during initiation, if you just sit there and think of your past master, your past Buddha, or your past whatever, then you get nothing here. And then you ask me why you don't have. And then you wonder why you come here, wonder if this is right or wrong for you. 
you will continue to wonder all your life if you do things the way you do. And no one can ever answer you enough. Your time is very valuable as well as mine. Yeah? If your time is not available, my time is. I don't have time to run around on bus and airplane uh, for fun. Just to come for you so that you just, just see me whenever you want and then uh, hang around and then go spazigang and then do anything you want. And then come and complain that you get nothing. And you don't know why you come here, that why you sit here and why you do this and then and others. You expect me to do everything for you. And then you don't do anything. Even just to come here and sit. We organize everything for you. Not that you have to organize. Not even. You do nothing. Nothing to do. Cooking people also cook for you. And then you don't even do that little bit of responsibility. So what do you think? Huh? What do you think? You think that's going to be okay? You think you will get uh, God's blessing in all this way? And then you think you have everything. Then I have to do everything. And you still criticize. I don't mean all of you. I know because of some of you are very sincere, very honest, very earnest to see me. That's why I am here. Do you think I'm stupid? I spend my money, my time to come here just to scold people, to get angry? If I can kill myself right now, that you understand. And that it helps you, I would do it. Just I see nothing helps you. It's so hard, like stone. I'm sorry for the one who understand already and the one who already are very developed. But I just have to tell some other people. You understand? I'm sorry if it doesn't concern you, but you must understand my position. If I don't tell them, they will never understand. If I always treat them nicely, humbly, they will treat upon my good teaching and then throw it out at the window. Do you understand? And nothing good for them at all. Nothing good at all for them. Not that I, I am humble, I spend my time, I accompany them, and then they know. To some people, the more I humble myself, the more arrogant they become. They think I need something from them. It's a funny situation. It's like you take a beggar, the poor, cold beggar inside your house, and then give him food and shelter, and you don't ask where he come from, and you know he has nothing, and he has no house. You know but perfectly, but the beggar, on the contrary, doubt your sincerity. Wonder if the owner of the, the rich house wants something from him. Perhaps want to take his uh, rack, his torn out clothes and things like that. It's a very funny situation. I already accommodate, him, accommodate everybody. The retreat is it's made, you wanted it, huh? It's not I who, who wanted this. I really don't like to go here. Hamburg doesn't appeal to me. But since you chose the, the place, okay, anywhere you want, I come with you. I have to travel too, not you. I have to prepare a lot of things for you. I have to read books late until deep in the night in order to see whether anything that I don't know that is occurring in this world at the moment, so that I talk according to your knowledge, according to what you know at the moment, so that I can break your illusion, okay? I can help you to understand. I sacrifice everything, I don't mind. But just a little time, just a little thing that you have to do, you don't. I apologize for the one who are diligent and and very, very polite and all that. I don't mean you, okay? But since you sit here, you listen together. Maybe it's also good, so that later you can explain to those who complain. Yeah? Not for you to, to feel good, bad, but to, for you so that you understand there are situations like this. And always, always encounter this. It's not the first time. 
but I always forget it. And for the one who are very sincere, I always have to, to, to break my head again and then do everything again, again and again. But sometimes there's a limit. I must tell you, if you think I'm no good, you just go. You don't stay around and then, then, then make, throw dirt around in the atmosphere. Normally today is not initiation day, because initiation day is a lot of garbage. A lot of karma I have to suffer before, between and after. So it is not a good time for people to, to do a retreat. But since you request it, and since I'm not very here often, I let you have initiation today. But that doesn't allow you the privilege to show off like a big, 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 big uh, shot and then, then steal everybody else's time or hang around outside while you should sit in here. Two hours is enough, no? For eating and resting and going to the bathroom and all that. We are on retreat, you know? <laughs> it's not that uh, you come here for, 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 for holiday, then I don't say anything. It's a different holiday. It's okay. But if you really want to see me, you must be here when I'm here. Not that you stay outside and talk all kind of nonsense and your mind is running in all over direction. And then when you see me, you come here. And then whatever I talk, you don't even understand. Because you have not catch up with the atmosphere yet. You still hang around outside and your mind, even when you come here, your mind is still on the topic. You know? Anything else? So come here just uh, still in people's space and time. So I'd rather these people stay outside if they have so much important thing to talk about. They should stay outside and talk. We don't force anybody. You should know what you come here for and you, you're obliged to continue your own program. Is that not so? It's not my program. You think if you, you are unrespectful to a teacher, then you are good? No. On the contrary. Understand? People look down upon you, because they see you have no manner, no education. You don't know what's the, what, what is, is it, what in this world. For example, the president of America. He's not your president, maybe, right? You might not agree with what he's doing in America, but this is his own country. Yeah? People voted for him, and he became the pres their president, and then he does what he's best. Yeah? What's to his best knowledge is good for his country. So when you see him, you still say, Mr. President, right? You respect him, his work. Maybe his work is not as good as you expected him to, uh, expected to be, but he does his best, you understand? And as long as he still sits in that office, you respect him as the head of the state. You understand? Otherwise, even if you, you, you sit there and, and talk bad about the president, people will think bad about you. There are some certain manner in this world we must ob observe and we must understand in order to live together in harmony. You keep asking me why I don't go out and lecture and <laughs> save people of the world. Is it if easy to save? Today, at the initiation, the highest God power is already here, present, and still couldn't touch them. Only hell fire can burn. You understand? So difficult, so hard is the people's heart that even they sit in God's presence, in God's power, they, they don't feel moved. I'm so frightened to think about it. You understand? I'm so frightened to think how hard people can be that even the most high power couldn't touch them. That's why the world is as it is. So don't ask me why. There is war, there is disaster, there is killing. What can the hair, poor, poor hair God do?
His power can shut the mountains, can dry up the ocean, can make the whole universe crumble into dust, and yet it doesn't touch some of the human's heart. It's very frightening what we have become. Then you always ask me, go here, go there, and talk to you, stay with you, or save your friends, save us family members, and do this and that and others. And if I refuse, you feel, Master, why? Why doesn't she do her job? Why doesn't she have compassion and love for mankind? Aren't they suffering enough? And things like that. <sighs> if I can do, I would have. If Jesus could have done, he would have done. Finished. <laughs> I don't have to to wait until our time. If Jesus would have saved all the world, he would have done. If Buddha could have saved all the world, <laughs> doesn't have to, 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 my turn wouldn't have come. Your turn would have come. You see how difficult it is? It's because we're too proud, too arrogant. We think we know too many things. We know this sutra, we know this Bible, we know all the, the we learn everything by heart, and then we're so proud of our own stupid knowledge. And then we think we know everything already. So whenever somebody wants to teach us something new, we refuse. Or we try to fight for it, or we try to criticize, or we try to, to show other people that we, we are fantastic, we know everything, we know better than that person. We only harm in ourselves, blocking our road to freedom, blocking the road of real knowledge. We're just taking all the advertisements for the real thing and then feeling proud about it. The situation of this world is like that. So I don't know. Every time I just want to run away. Every time. I don't want to even say anything or talk about anything. Even you, if you practice for some time, you still don't want to talk, right? Huh? I mean, sometimes to argue with people and that make you tired, no? It does come, huh? After some times, you don't even want to talk and discuss and argue, things like that, because you know it's, it's useless. The way they talk and the way you understand is completely different. So, you understand my situation, huh? How much less would I like to talk or go out and, 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 and let people see and things like that? But of course I do it, but it takes some, some time. I have to, to be recharged again and again and again in order to continue. Because some people do really take a lot. Some person take one portion, is enough for 1,000. You don't know that. Some people are so hard, so burdened with their own, their own karma, that even to give him, to lift him up a little bit, it takes all the energy that you could give to 1,000 people. Do you understand that? You know? Do you ever feel something like that? Or oh, you see that in meditation? <sighs> okay, meditate. Turn the light off. Inside, the mention about the name, the flute, the five regions. You know, the flute? The, the, the harp, the other thing, all things like that. And in Buddhist scripture also mention about the, the inside sound of the drum, of the gong, of the shell, of the thing, uh, of the, the uh, sea waves, and blah, 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 all kind of things. And in the Bible as well, it mentioned like the thunder, yeah? And, the, and the, uh, the thunder, the sound of thunder. God speaks like the sound of the thunder. His sound is like the sound of many water, that means the sound of sea wave, etc., etc. And also the sound of um, uh, trumpet, yeah? Like when, when the Bible mentioned about St. John, when he went to the second heaven, he heard the sound of trumpet, etc., etc. But these sounds are not ordinary sounds, just because just be originally there's no such an instrument in this world. After the people who practice well, they come to heaven, 
They listen to the harp and the flute and all that, the direct teaching from God, which is so melodi me melodious. And then they came back here. Uh, they tried to <laughs> make the instrument, which became the musical instrument of our time. That's why sometimes you see the picture of the old time, there were angels, and then the, the harps in, in both sides. You know, that represents the teaching of heaven. Originally, we don't have the drum, the gong, the harp, and piano, and all these kind of things. Only after the heavenly being comes down and teaches us this inner melody, then we begin to copy of the heavenly music and try to figure out how to make the flute that resembles the inner sound. So for the purpose of teaching mankind, all these masters try to make music instruments. For the purpose of teaching people, the master of all time, they make all kind of instruments. You understand? And then now, even if we hear just some of the outer instruments, our soul also feel very comforted. Is that not so? The, the children, when they hear music, they stop. So now, um, you see, in the, in the old time, you know, the Muslim you saw already, huh? and the Christian, <coughs> the Christian, uh, when they greet, you know, then when they pray to God and they do this, you know what it is? In the old time, it is a secret signal. Must concentrate here, okay? Repeat the five names, yeah? And do the Kuan Yin. That's a secret si signal when they greet each other, so that they don't, they won't, will not be known to other people. That's why when Jesus, after he resurrected, some people doubt whether it is the master, but when he broke the bread, you know what I mean? He does some signal, then people know it's him. That is a si secret signal between the Christian in the old time. You see? You see? <laughs> Concentrate on wisdom, I remember. Huh? Repeat the five names, but now they do it up to here. <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the old time, it's here. You know? It's secret, yeah? It's wisdom, wisdom, five names, and Guani. So then you know we are fellow practitioners, right? In the old time, you cannot say it. You cannot wear the badge. You cannot wear my picture here, my God. You, you'll be killed in one second, right? They make barbecue out of you. Hmm? <laughs> Pork chop. So that's why they have to do this like this, see? The wisdom eye, five names, and the Kuan Yin. But now, uh, slowly it comes down. All come up, you know, here, there, and uh, anywhere. And then here, <laughs> and come up to here, you know. <laughs> Never mind, see? So, and in Buddhism, when they greet each other, they do like this. You see what I mean? It's also a secret greeting. See? Here. They do like this. See? They do like this. So this also pointing to wisdom eye, you see? And then the two, Kuan Yin method. Yes, that's how they greet each other. But now they only greet and nothing else. Just like the Christian, they only do this and nothing else happen. You know what I mean? All the Muslim, they only do this and nothing happen. But woe to you who don't do it. Then you're not a real Muslim not a real Christian, and not a real Buddhist. You know what I mean? <laughs> only this one will make you a Buddhist. And only this one make you a Muslim. And only this one make you a Christian. There's nothing else left behind. Same with this cloth. Now, if you go in a Sikh temple, and you don't wear anything on your head, then people will throw you out. It's supposed to be for the old time when you come here, you meditate, you know? <laughs> you cover yourself so that nobody see you, especially in the public, you know? And there was also a secret uh, recognition between each other. So the woman will wear the shy like this, and the men will cover it in their head. So when they want to meditate, they take it down and cover themselves. Also, the men are supposed to wear long hair too, in case, in any case, when he meditate, all the hair will cover himself. Just like we cover with the cloth. You understand? That's why the sick people, they must grow their hair very long. And now there's the only one thing left is the hair. <laughs> thing like that, you know what I mean? If you don't grow your hair long as a man, you're not a sick. Otherwise, for what reason should they wear their hair long? 
But now the only thing left is the shawl and the hair. Now you see what I mean? All the religion originate from the same Kuan Yin group. It just they have to find a way to communicate, to identify themselves. Now we have the, the badge. You see the name, identification card. Because we can openly practice now uh, in some place. In uh, uh, so many places, still a secret, still a secret. Yeah? So, for example, in some places in Vietnam, people wear my, my, my so say, picture inside. And when they go to group meditation, they take it out. <laughs> Thing like that, yes. Or they wear their badge inside out, yeah? And when they come inside, okay, and then they come. For example, like that. Similar, similarly, in the old time, very difficult to practice this kind of spiritual openly because it is the power of God, it's a real power. If you practice any kind, you go to the church, you go to the temple, nobody bother, really. But as soon as you connect with the real power, the king of Maya, the king of devil, begin to irritate you, to want to chase you, persecute you, make trouble for you, test your faith and endurance. That's the problem. So you see, what's left from the, <laughs> the real teaching is just a piece of cloth or, or a piece of tapish, tapish, no, uh, huh? the carpet, piece of carpet. The, what you use now become holy in 2,000 years to come. Later on, whoever belongs to Qinghaiism and don't have a, a seat cushion like you, <laughs> he is an atheist. You understand now? What the carpet means to some of the people, it's just a, a cushion that is such a necessity of the time. When the Master is still alive, you do it, you take it with you because you need it. You know, like I sit here right now, there's nothing here. And it, it hurts. It hurts me. You know what I mean? So, of course, you take, you take the carpet with you. You want to see? Okay, but it's good. It was very good for meditation. For example. <laughs> okay. So, of course, because the floor is hard, and especially in the old time, you can only sit on the, the, the floor, yeah, anywhere. So, you take the carpet with you just like you take the cushion with you, so you can sit longer and cleaner and warm and more stable. And that's all there is. And now, anybody who don't have a carpet is not a Muslim, <laughs> for example, you know what I mean? And the carpet is everything to them. Nobody can touch it, for example. It becomes the holy thing instead of the, the object. It becomes a, a goal instead of just a, a mean to an end. It become an end. The carpet. People worship the carpet, for example. And another thing. Jewish. Jewish, they have the prayer shawl. Prayer shawl? You call it? Yes. Okay. That is everything to them. They even use it to exorcise or to cure people, and they believe in that. It's just, just a piece of cloth that we call Guan Yin cloth at the moment. You know what I mean? But now, everything left from Jewism is a cloth, or the top of the head, the symbolic, you know, of the head, because in all the time, the men must also wear something to cover themselves. But it looks bad, you know, or uh, this people can, uh, uh, they fear that people know them, so they, they use some symbolic, you know, they wear a little head here, see? And now, uh, everything, anything else left, just the head, the little head here. A little for the Jewish. All the prayer shawl. Shawl or shawl? Shawl. Yeah. The prayer shawl. We do have now, but nobody even talk about it. But for them, it's holy, it's sacred. It's God. <laughs> How can you use a shawl to, to exercise, you know, devil out of people? But they do that. Of course, it doesn't work. So, you, you know what? Everything now. <laughs> Uh, what happened to all the religion? That's why I told you, all the religion are correct, came from the same source, but now what's left is only the ritual and right and, and uh, yeah, rituals and regulations, yeah? And some signal, <laughs> secret signal, <laughs> nothing more. Otherwise, all religions came from the same Guan Yin method. 
That's the only method that creates all religion. That's the only method that all the master in the past, present, and future teach. That's the only source of all religion of mankind. You understand now? Got it? Okay. So don't ask me any path or the path. There's no path at all. It's only one direct connection. And if we know it, we know it. If we don't, we don't. Even if you sit for a thousand years and your bottom fall off, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> you don't connect. There's no, when there's no electricity, you plug in there one thousand years, it, the, the light doesn't come out. Nothing function. I hope you do understand. Of course, some of you do. And I wish you will understand very soon and truly appreciate what you have got. Otherwise, it's, it's really, really a greatest loss in your great journey to the kingdom of God. There's one chance in a lifetime, in many lifetimes. That's why you don't appreciate it. Because in the old time, you don't get it like this. You don't just come in and knock at the door and then you get it. <laughs> you are chased by governments, by police, by enemies, by all kinds of religious fanatics before you even see the Master in person, if you ever will. And if you ever believe in that Master as well. And after that, if you ever stay, you know, and never waver on the path. Look at what happened to Peter, to Judah. Huh? Peter, the greatest disciple. And people ask him, do you know this person? No, no. I don't know him. I don't know what Jesus is. See what I mean? The great disciple. Master Jesus personally trained them <laughs> many years. Day and night they sleep together, eat together. All kind of secret teaching imparted to them. Look at what happened to, to them. At the time of, 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 of a crucial emergency, he doesn't recognize the master. He doesn't want to. Because he fear for this ephemeral flesh. He fear that people kill him, laugh at him, punish him, torture his body. You see, you see how much it takes to have faith? How long does a master take to train a disciple? And he, Peter, is a pillar of Christianity. Without him, no Catholicism exists, no Christianity, Christianity ever comes to our ear today. You know? You understand? See, even then, even the master trained himself and be so humble as Jesus. <laughs> it's not that easy. Such a great soul as Peter. Tested once <laughs> and failed. Second time, failed again. Third time, he came and cried. Who else wouldn't cry? Yeah? See, in such a state, degrading state of our soul, we would even die. If you could see the degrading stage of your soul, you would die. But there is still hope. We can make it together. We can try. If there is a little sincerity, the Master will always stand by and help. As long as we walk just one step, the Master power will come running. That's evident to you. Otherwise, I don't think. If there is not a Master power within me who works, I don't think any woman at my age would be so crazy running around the world, spending her youth, time, money, energy, in order to, f to get what? You know what I mean? If really it has not been for master power, nothing else that worked this way. Do you think, or do you think it will work that way? You think any woman would do that? Or any man would do that? No, huh? No, I don't think so. It's too... An ordinary <laughs> for any people to do that. You might can do it for a while with a certain few good friends, but not 
all kind of strangers, all kind of mentality, all kind of personality, all kind of nationalities, all kind of garbage. Anyhow, that's why I tell you, <laughs> there is a master power that works. That master power convinced me. <laughs> so, in any case, in these days, because we are in a very difficult time of our planet, so God has been very generous and easy. So we, also there is a law of this time that uh, no master would be killed anymore. Maybe if total inside, <laughs> total inside mentally, but not killed. So it's easier to spread the Dharma, to spread the teaching openly, every nation, every country, because the master will not be harmed physically anymore. So that's why it's easy. Anyone who takes this job as a master can travel around freely, but not always. I will tell you some story later. <clears throat> and it's, that's why people get in touch with the God power in a very easy way. That's why it looks cheap to some of you. That's why you don't understand. That's why you don't appreciate it. Because you're so used to it, sweating <laughs> yourself, or shedding your blood in order to earn a piece of bread. You can't believe anything so good, precious, noble, so free, and unconditional. But that's where you make mistake. So you better be careful. I'm not telling you because I don't know anything else better to tell you. I have studied many methods as well. I have many teachers. Not only this life, but many lives. So I tell you from my own knowledge, and experience. If there is something else better, I would have gone and studied. I will not deprive myself of any higher knowledge and wasting my time sitting here and talking nonsense to you, because I'm the one who likes to pursue the truth myself. You understand? For me, <laughs> even if you feel detached to this world, I feel the same too. You see, all I want is God. Everything else just come by the way. Because I want God so much, so everything else will come. You think I would like all this kind of thing? Nah, not really. I just wear it for fun. Just to make you feel more colorful, so you can remember me better in your meditation. Because you're still in this world, you still love a little outer beauty. That's all right with me. As soon as I come home, oh, I can't wait to take it off. I never wear them before even, even before I got married. Or after I got married, why would I wear them now? <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't even care about them before, before enlightenment. Why should I care about them now? It's just that whatever God tells me to do, whatever good for you, I do it. I even kill myself for you, so what is the little thing here that I could not do? You know what I mean? That's all. Because even you just meditate for a few hours, a few days, you still don't feel like <laughs> putting too much of this thing anymore. How much would I even feel now? I don't want it. But never mind, it's okay. doesn't matter, it's the same job. Mm. <laughs> same job. Mm? When you cultivate a garden, if you plant some roses, or you plant chrysanthemum, or you plant a little more other kind of uh, wild grass, it's also okay. It must not always be the roses. I want to tell you something, I forgot. What was it? Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. I told you that every country is free now, right? There's a law, uh, there's a decree from heaven that there no master should be killed. The true master should not be killed this time. I hope. <laughs> but still, there are a lot of obstacles. It's not as free as we think. We, we were thinking maybe in Jesus' time, yeah, it's a little bit difficult. People will persecute true practitioners. Or in Buddha's time, people would try to assassinate him because he was preaching the truth. But there is still the same thing happening now. Even though uh, less obvious, or less brutal, 
or less uh, uh, visible to you. I know one master. He's a real master. He also teaches Kuan Yin method. He's an Indian, India. Now, he's not allowed to come to Germany anymore. And he did nothing wrong, for what I know. I can see. I know he's a very good person. If not talking about master, he's a very clear person. He doesn't take money, he doesn't demand anything from disciples. He's just teach. He's a true master. Yeah? Not talking about his level, okay? Maybe I cannot see his level, but he teaches Kuan Yin method as well. There are several teachers who teach this. And he was a really, really good soul, noble one. Maybe I cannot guarantee to you his level of uh, practice, but I can guarantee you his character, his personality, his heart is a very good man, okay? So put it that way, so you, you, it's more practical to you. <coughs> I cannot prove to you the thing I cannot put it out, so I can only tell you he's a very good man, okay? But for my own knowledge, he's also a very noble, elevated, high-level practitioner. Okay. What he has done? Nothing. One time, the German disciples requested him to make also a retreat for the children in somewhere I forgot. I only heard, I don't know anything about it, but what I heard is true. And then so he, he okay, okay. Maybe uh, four days, four days or seven days retreat. And that's the only crime that he did. Now they forbid him to go to Germany because he made that retreat for the children. And uh, other family members who don't agree with this policy, they come out, they went and, I uh, would say, persecuted him. Yeah. They reported to the authority that he abused the children. Make the crime from nothing. And you know what it's like in Western, your, your Western country, like America or Europe, if you abuse children, you're finished. Luckily, he's Indian, otherwise he'd be sitting in, in jail now in Germany and praying to God over there. So now he's not allowed to go to Germany anymore because of, of that, because he was too good to children, because he accepted the request from his disciples to take care of their children for these certain days, according to their wish. You see that? For no crime at all, he has been persecuted. And it was on the papers and television and all that as well. So even though they did not kill the master, or is not allowed to kill a master anymore, it's not that easy, all right? I just want to let you know that you should appreciate your chance. Otherwise, no one can help you. Even God come down here right now, if you don't accept, God cannot do anything. Because we all have free will, we all have the right to accept or refuse anything, even from God. That's why, that's why He is God. That's why there is universe. That's why there is cosmos and many other things, etc., etc. You understand? Uh, this is 1995, 2,000 years after Jesus. These things still happen. I can swear to you, and swear on God's name, that that man is innocent. I have nothing to do with him, I get nothing from him. You know? <laughs> and I don't have to know him, you don't have to know him. He has nothing to do with us. But that man is innocent, 100%, 1,000%. He has done nothing wrong. You know that, right? If we do retreat together, and if the children are there, what can I do, or what can anyone do with the children? The families are there, the members are there. <coughs> All they do is sit in a room with the parents, perhaps, yeah, and the teacher were there and sit with them for a while. He, he don't have to sit with them all the time. Just like I'm with you. I sit with you for a while and perhaps I go do something else and you continue your sitting and I'm around, right? I don't have to sit with you all day long. What can I do with you here now, in this room, for example? <laughs> but even in Taiwan before, people... Before, when we retreat, we don't let other outside people come in. Huh? And then many people also say something nasty about us. Say we are taking all our clothes off and doing something here, inside. You see that? 
We even have to cover ourselves, <laughs> talking about taking clothes off. <laughs> Thing like that, you know what I mean? That's why I know that man is innocent. One thousand, one million, one billion percent innocent. He's done nothing wrong. He's an old man, very dedicated to God and to his disciples. I haven't seen anyone who is more dedicated. I feel very sorry for him. Now he's sat in India, I heard, sick with karma. And no one can understand him. He's sick, his both lung is full of water. I don't know when he will die. And there's nothing anyone can do for him. It's not only the physical burden he has to bear. It's a bad name. It's the, 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 the blackened reputation that he has to even bear during the time that he lived. It's like he's dying while living, you know? Jesus, he died only once and quickly on the cross. But the today master, <laughs> even though they don't die, <laughs> but they die inside. So I'm lucky to still be able to sit here with you. And I don't know for how long. I can never tell. So don't think I will always have time for you. So take care of yourself. Every minute is very important. You never know if I have the same fate or if something will happen and we never see each other again. Anything could happen. War, disasters, yeah? A tomb bomb, anything. So don't think that I want anything from you or I want you to worship me or follow me or listen to me for the sake of my ego. No, no, no. I worry for you. Because you never know if you see me again, never mind worshiping me, following me, or do anything for me. I don't need anything. When you look at me closely, when you see the thing I do, you know that I'm not the one for fame and name and money and things like that. Don't you? Do you? You look closely and you see the thing I do. Then you know. So all the thing is for you. And don't think because I can travel freely now, I might be able to do so for the rest of my life. may not be so. Look at that man. He's famous before I'm born. His teacher and his the whole lineage, the whole clan, is famous before my parents even born. They have disciples all over the world. And what happened to him? And he's a real master from India. Never mind me, just born a few <laughs> decades ago and nobody even know my name and from Vietnam and refugees and all that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have not even heavy weight. I have no background. I have no great lineage, no great uh, famous master backing me. I have nothing. I'm born in Vietnam. When people think of Vietnam, they want to run away. I have nothing to wait. I have nothing I can lean on to catch people or to support myself, to protect myself. Nothing. So anything could happen anytime. Not that because I'm free now to travel, that the, all the teaching are so easy to get. It is, it's, it's easy because I make it easy. It is easy because I know it's very difficult if I make it difficult. It's already difficult enough for you to come to me through all the obstacles and problems and karma and all that. And once you come here, I would like to keep you. I would like to help you because it's already difficult enough for you to arrive here, just that you don't know it. You don't know how much uh, uh, garbage the master has to clean before you arrive here. You know nothing. You're like a child taken care of by parents. It's all right. It's all right. But do not uh, waste this opportunity because you won't get it again for many thousand millions of years. If you waste once, you have to be on the last of the waiting list if you want to b begin again. Just like in a shop. huh? You see something, you want to buy, but you didn't. And you pay money for something, or you went out. And when later, when you regret, you want to come back in and buy, if people are already in front of you a lot, and you have to wait in the last 
uh, queue at the last queue because all the people are already in front of you. To be a human being is already very, very, very difficult. And in order to meet a real master and get initiated into this running method, <laughs> I cannot tell you. I have no human language to describe to you the pressures the of, of this method. <laughs> I have no ability to tell you. I really cannot. To compare to anything at all, it means you, 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 <laughs> you blacken the name of the method. This is no comparison. There's nothing you can say about it. All you have to do is open your heart, humble yourself, and then you will see how it works for you every day. Do not deprive yourself from this most mighty power. Let it work for you. Just let it work for you. Relax. Let it be. Then everything you want will come. Every protection will be yours. Every day will be miracle. I suffer because of you. Otherwise, I'm the most happy person in the world. I never know suffering after initiation until I met you. So don't look at me and think because I meditate, I still suffer. No, no, it's all yours. It's all your karma. The years before I take over this job, I don't know what misery and unhappiness and discontentment. I have three, four pairs of clothes. I'm every day happy as an angel. I have nothing with me. I'm just happy. There's indescribable inside. Because I was having no responsibility for anybody. I don't know what suffering and unhappiness was. It's too late now <laughs> to come back to that stage. But it's all right, as long as you know what you're getting and open yourself to this power and let it help you. Otherwise, it's a waste of your time and my time too. And you will regret it later, and it's too late. <laughs> when you are sent back to this transmigration again, then you can see it from heaven how you're going to suffer. At that time, you regret. This is very, very late. Oh, okay. Uh, I was telling you how to meditate on Guan Yin, and I talked so long. <laughs> now you can meditate. Meditate until 10, right? Meditate.